Hello everyone, my name is Niklas and today I'm talking about Shopware frontends and I'm not doing this alone, I'm doing this with Dominic Klein. Hi Dominic. Hello there. Um, in case you don't know me, uh, I'm, I'm the developer evangelist of Shopware currently and um, the thing is called Shopware frontend, so I think that matches up. Dominic, uh, what do you do at Shopware? Because he's also employed at Shopware. Um, I'm responsible for the development of Shopware frontends. Um, oh, that's great. <laughs> I'm also responsible for developer experience um, that mostly includes documentation, but also uh, tooling around Shopware. Um, but uh, it's not the topic of today's. No, maybe? no. We but in general, in general, in uh, general, you take care in the future that the developer experience um, of outside developers gets that's better what and I better. Do. Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, I took some notes. Um, we are done with the greeting, I think. So let's move on to the next thing. So before we get into detail of Shopware frontends, um, can you give me, as an introduction, basically an elevator pitch of what it is? Elevator pitch, you know. I'll try to do that. <laughs> so um, imagine the classical process of developing a theme uh, in Shopware, or basically a custom storefront. Mm -hmm. um, you need a Shopware instance. Um, you start creating a theme, you need to understand the boilerplate of creating a theme. So, in general, um, it's about developers? It's about developers, okay. it's about developing mm -hmm. custom front-ends. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you need to do a couple overrides, create a couple files and then install your theme in the end. So, that's basically how theme development always worked in Shopware. Um, now, with Shopware front-ends, we're kind of turning that inside out by creating um, a platform for you where you can start from scratch and we give you the tools um, that allow you to use Vue.js to build a very custom front end from scratch basically. Mm -hmm. And we provide you with a couple tools and guidelines and examples that you can use to uh, fully own your front end and have none of these update liabilities that you have uh, with a theme for example and a lot more freedom, a lot more ownership about your tech stack, about your project, about your structure. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds great. Um, we will take uh, the rest of the interview to explain what that exactly means. Awesome. <clears throat> um, but one, one other thing before that. How final is the name Frontends? The name Frontends is a working title. Mm -hmm. um, we had to come up with something uh, because we wanted to share it with the community and not uh, work on it in private all the time. Um, but it's, it's not final. Um, there will probably be another name once it's going to be Maybe. released. Um, Maybe. We can tell you what now, um, but that doesn't stop you and us from uh, sharing. Yeah. sharing. So uh, what I get from that also is it's not the final release right now while we are filming this video. So um, it's early access or what? Um, it's basically a public, public early access, public beta you could call it. So it's uh, not any, anywhere close to um, this is how we will fix the API. Um, but nevertheless, the API won't change to such a huge degree mm. that we would tell anybody to like keep their fingers off it or just use it for plenty. And by fixing the API, you are not talking about repairing the API, but... Um, are we talking about polishing parts of the API okay. interface and that we provide? by API, you are not talking about the Shopware API? No, I'm talking about the internal framework API okay. of Shopware Frontend. So. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we have to be very specific here because that's our lot of terms that uh, we throw around without you out there knowing what it means yet. Okay. So, this is all JavaScript, right? Uh, Shopware Frontend is, is mostly based on JavaScript, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, there is another JavaScript based thing that we created in the past, which is called a PWA. Uh, what's the heritage here for Shopware frontends? Is it based on the PWA? You could say it is, it is based on Shopware PWA. Um, from a, an architectural point of view, it is very similar to Shopware PWA, but we have made some experiences with projects in Shopware PWA um, that led us to some insights and some decisions that made us throw away some of the stuff that we had in Shopify PWA that didn't really work out well or bring the benefits that we thought it would. 
Mm. Um, and for that reason, we actually decided to put focus on some other points in Shopware frontends than we did in Shopware PWA. Um, and that basically leads to Shopware frontends. So it's the logical next step after what we experienced with the PWA. It's an evolution. You could put it like that. Okay, great. I like evolution. It's uh, what made this uh, possible today. Okay, otherwise you would be fish. Anyway, so um, PWA was, uh, let me just uh, phrase this real quick um, and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, PWA basically was the idea that you create your own storefront somewhere that's installable on mobile devices, um, kind of, and uh, you, you share, you only uh, communicate to Shopware via the API. Um, so, and now Shopware frontends is basically the same but with more freedom and less opinion, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, first question that springs to mind is, um, that's why I wrote it down, is there a migration path between a PWA project and Shopware frontends? Um, no, there is no direct migration path, um, though I think you can make an argument that for PWA projects, which are by definition custom projects, um, there is little benefit of migrating the underlying framework to Shopware frontends now because you already have a project. Um, and basically what we removed from Shopware PWA going to Shopware frontends was the UI part of the framework. So Shopware PWA shipped with a default theme mm -hmm. um, and that default theme provided some extension points that allowed uh, developers to install plugins even in PWA and also build themes on top of PWA. So they could override single components and then the default theme together with the custom components would make their custom project. That sounds super nice and helpful uh, when you hear about it, but when you actually start building projects that mm. way, um, it introduces a lot of dependencies within the project that make, make it very hard to maintain. And uh, we decided to remove all of that, um, all of that UI logic, that UI layer, and instead just provide you with the underlying uh, foundation, with the underlying fun functionality, so that you can start choosing from scratch, basically, what UI you want to build, what frameworks you want to use, so and so on. What, what is left? There is an API client, right? There is an API client. Which is an independent JavaScript library or tied to Vue.js? It is the API client is actually a vanilla JS uh, library. You can mm -hmm. use it in any JavaScript Node.js based project. Um, so it's not even bound to to Vue.js. You can use it in React, Svelte, or just basic. How, how basic powerful JavaScript. is uh, how powerful is, is the API client? It's basically an abstraction of our API. So it contains every single API endpoint. It contains types for the parameters. Um, and for the responses, so you can... You can which, which API? Store API. Store API. Shopware Store API. Okay, yeah, I mean, that, that's a, a... Important point. Yeah. Important point, right. Um, okay, so it's not just the API client, but what's also part of this project front ends? Um, yeah, there are, front ends. There are mm. a couple more, um, more packages that we um, have as part of Shopware front ends. Uh, first of all, and that is probably the most important and most central one to Shopware frontends, which is the composables. Um, composables are containers for, for logic and state of a specific uh, domain or component of an online store. Is, that is composable something that Shopware invented or as a, as a, as a term? It or? is a pattern that was, um, I think, introduced in Vue 3. Mm -hmm. um, it's been around in different other frameworks as well. Uh, people who know React or are familiar with React, they, they've probably worked with React hooks, which is basically the very same concept. Um, and it's a way of providing reusable functionality. Okay, so the last time someone told me about combining logic and state, they called it an object in PHP. So is this what I can get from this? It is a more functional approach, um, but mm -hmm. it's a different way of solving a similar problem. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's what we're talking about. Composables can be thought of as kind of something that works like an object in PHP. More like a service, maybe. More like um, a service, okay. But, uh, but yeah, composables are 
they, they are similar to services in such a way as they deal with a specific business domain. So, mm -hmm. for example, we have composables for checkout, we have composables dealing with uh, product listing and all the operations related to that. We have composables that deal with uh, the wish list functionality and the user state. Okay, um, so just uh, to get this straight, when I'm talking or when you are talking about composables, um, there's an API client and there is a composable. How do I use these? Um, is it just that, that it's just another layer um, over the API client or what is the benefit here? Yeah. So if you, if you use the API client, you have to know quite well how the API works. Um, you have to know which parameters do what thing, how to maybe combine API calls or even how to prepare certain API calls to give you the data that you want. Mm -hmm. So it requires a lot of specific Shopware API specific knowledge. Um, the composables are designed in such a way that um, you need to understand how the composable works, but you don't have to understand how the API works. So you can just use the composable to build a product listing and it gives you methods to refresh the listing, to do pagination, to filter for specific things. And it's way easier than preparing all those API calls by hand. So a composable adds magic to the API. I wouldn't call it magic, but it does work for you. Well, yeah. it's magic if, if I don't have to understand how something works. Yeah. It just works. Yeah, it's so. an additional layer of abstraction mm -hmm. and it makes it also easier to maintain your application. So if Shopware decides to introduce um, new features in the API or maybe even break something in the API, the composables are an additional layer of stability that we give you as developers. Um, so you don't have to worry about changes in the underlying API. Okay, so that is the API client and composables. Um, there are also CMS elements, right? Yes, um, the C Shopware CMS is basically headless. Uh, basically? Basically headless because um, it does give a certain structure. It's based on sections, blocks and elements. It's like a hierarchy of, of, of elements that we have. Um, and these comprise a CMS page. Um, now what Shopware PWA and also Shopware Frontends were doing were taking that structure and translating that into an object tree, into a page that can be rendered. Um, and in Shopware Frontends, we split those things apart. First of all, we have the like, getting the data and building building a tree from that data and then the second part is um, building all the different cms elements that we have pictures products sliders videos all of that um, and we provide those as two separate packages so if you want to reuse our implementation of the um, of the shopping experiences you can do that if you decide to have your very own implementation of the elements you can do that as well or you can override parts of it all right, um, another thing that is part of the whole spiel, I like to use German words in English. Um, so uh, another part of this is um, the cookbook, the mythical cookbook. What, what is that? Since we're not providing a fully fledged um, theme or front end application with Shopify front ends, we had to come up with a different way of introducing features that would somehow be in alignment with the way that people are going to use front-ends to build their projects. What do you mean by features here? When I'm talking about features, I'm talking about things like a wish list uh, in your store or Shopware 6.5 is going to bring the block feature. Um, so how to, so to prevent people from reinventing the wheel every single time? From how we prevent people from having to understand and figure out how a certain feature works by just the API and the composables. Mm -hmm. um, instead, we give them a cookbook and a cookbook is usually um, pieces of code together with some explanation that conveys how to integrate a certain feature that is added to Shopware into their custom project. Mm -hmm. And we think that is the, the most value that we can offer to developers um, when it go when it comes to to custom custom yeah. front end my, my first um, my first experience with Shopware front ends actually was that I just went to GitHub Shopware front ends so GitHub slash Shopware slash front ends and they can just go like okay I want to 
try this now and then it spawns a stack blitz instance and you can just basically copy paste code and magic happens magic again yeah <laughs> and things just work which is which is uh, very nice but um, this is, can also be used apart from testing it to really building features inside your page um, e-commerce features because um, correct me if I'm wrong but that's what I'm understanding here that you or project shop by front ends is a way to enrich your Vue.js page or application with shopware features. So you could build whatever you want and drop in like a basket here, a product there, or you can just rebuild the whole shopware experience, but then again, you don't need shopware front ends. So um, it's very custom, very easy to start on a green field and just drop e-commerce functionality where you need it, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Many, many customers nowadays um, opt out of going with a default theme, uh, an onboard front end that's part of a whole e-commerce suite. Uh, because you don't want to have an online catalog, but an experience. Because you want to have an experience, because you want to have more ownership of the way that you, yeah, that you sell your products to the customer. Um, and that, that can also begin with integrating a different CMS or uh, integrating a personalization tool that completely mixes up the page structure depending on which, which uh, customer is visiting the page. Um, and those and other reasons um, lead many customers to, to opt out of having those default front ends and actually building their own front end because the front end is the layer of, um, of separation from uh, from their uh, from their competition and at the same time so it's it's the layer where everything that you have in your backend runs comes together, together comes together and gets to the customer and basically we are talking about composable commerce right now we <laughs> could hop on the buzzword train and say things like people have microservices and they need to integrate it somewhere no but the truth is actually that customers are building out services on their backend and they're choosing way, way more uh, external services that they buy instead of building them by themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and all those services are designed in a headless fashion for exactly that reason, for bringing them together in the front end and allowing um, merchants ultimately to build the ultimate experience. So well, that's a nice sentence. Maybe we should write that down somewhere on the start page. <laughs> um, so when you, when you reiterate um, composable CMS elements API client, there is a certain degree of um, opinion in these parts, right? Because you, uh, you can use the API client wherever you want. You can use it in your React application. That does not work with composables, is that right? Because these are uh, view specific. Mm -hmm. And um, CMS elements then are, again, very shopware specific. So, um, and so there, there is a degree, uh, the farther the magic gets, the more opinion is in there. Yep. And we also have like a reference implementation right now, is that correct? Mm -hmm. That's then basically like the PWA because everything is already there. Yeah, yeah, basically okay. it's, it's uh, the same thing. And yeah, um, just a word on, on what you said. Um, the more we provide out of the box, um, the more opinionated we have to get because when we decide to build a CMS package that can be reused, that comes with the convenience of just working, we have to make some decisions like um, how, do we, how do we model the data flow and for example for that we have to use Vue.js. How do we design the components? For that we decided to use Tailwind CSS. So we have to make some of those decisions and that way lock in the people that use that packages. But you always have the option to, to opt out of that um, and have the technological freedom, but still use some parts of front end. Mm. And of course, we have an awesome community. So um, this could also be used as a model project to create the same um, thing for, let's say, React, Angular, or even a completely different language, because the concept is the cool thing. The implementation is just the work. Exactly, exactly. It can be seen like the current status of Shopify Finance is kind of a trailblazer. And um, based on the API that we have right now, if people find it to be useful and stable and convenient and, and intuitive, 
um, there's nothing uh, nothing wrong with re-implementing that in React, mm. for example. Yeah. Um, so we will get to this point a little bit later because I also want to know what we support, how long do we support it, what does the success depend on and stuff like this. But first, um, now we talked about me clicking around, then some stack blitz instance pops up and I can do stuff, which is awesome. But if I really do not just want to play around, which basically everyone should do now and give us feedback, but different topic. Um, so if I want to do something, something serious in the future when everything is so stable that you can really do productive work with it, um, what would be the journey from zero to shop B? Mm -hmm. You just said when you can to do productive stuff with it. You, you can basically do productive stuff with it. The difference in Shopware frontends compared to a suite like the Shopware store front is, um, you own the front end. Um, and it's totally fine using a not final um, underlying framework um, when the product that, that is resulting um, is something that you feel production worthy. And that can totally be the case with, with Shopware Finance. Because what works, works. Because what works, works, exactly. And uh, you have the power to update whenever you feel like updating is a good idea, not when Shopware does. Well, question. <laughs> When Shopware breaks the API, you have to update, right? When Shopware breaks the API and um, you up, your, your Shopware store needs, a, needs an update, of course, you need to update the dependency as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, um, the deployment process, of course, depends on how you set up the project. Um, in, in Shopify Frontends, we have different or we offer different ways of starting your project. You can start off with a blank template, which is just an empty Nuxt.js application um, that has the Shopify Frontends dependencies installed. Um, Quick question for those who don't know it, what is Nuxt.js? Um, Nuxt.js is a meta framework on top of Vue.js um, that adds some nice features for routing and for file handling. And, okay. yeah. mm -hmm. um, you can use that or you can start with the so-called demo store template, which is a reference implementation that is, it has most of the features, not all features of Shopware, but it shows how everything can look if it's assembled in a way that it's supposed to. So uh, you can use it as a blueprint. You can use it as just something to, to see how it's done and then implement it in your, in your own project. The third option is starting with an existing JavaScript Node.js project um, and pulling in Shopware frontends as a JavaScript dependency, installing it into your project. Um, and then, it, again, it totally depends. If you have a static deployment, uh, you pre-render all the pages, or if you decide to have a fully dynamic server-side rendered application. Mm. Um, this is nothing that um, Shopware frontends tells you how to do. Um, it completely depends. That's nice. Um, what about plugin support? Plugin support is... Or, this sorry, app support. What about app support? Extension support, maybe. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Extension support is the same as with every headless project. Um, as long as the e extension provides the API endpoints for an application to interact with the Shopware backend, um, you, can, you can do anything. So, mm -hmm. you, of course, you have to take care of the front end implementation of that specific feature that the extension provides. Um, but so a new button in listing would be an extension that naturally would not work in your application. Yeah, sure. yeah. Any any extension that just works with the Shopware default storefront just works with the Shopware default storefront by default. So, yeah. yeah. So good. So it's about uh, extensions that provide different ways of functionality in the back end or uh, change how data is. Um, is uh, handed over in the API. Those are things that you can use. Things to just change the Shopware storefront are things you cannot use, basically. Okay, great. So um, this sounds good because, uh, well, I'm starting on a green field. I can do whatever I want, more power to me. But also it sounds maybe to some people a bit intimidating because I can do whatever I want. Um, so what is the level of experience someone should have to start with that? Um, 
Yeah, so you should certainly have knowledge, prior knowledge in Vue.js. Um, and you can generally say the more the better. Um, we do have a very in-depth documentation. Um, it is written in such a way that people that have a um, good understanding of Vue.js, so that have worked through the guides on the Vue.js website and the Vue.js documentation, um, that they are understand, uh, able to understand our documentation and get going with Shopware frontends right away. There's very little that you have to learn about Shopware frontends itself. Of course, you have to see which composables to use in order to build something, but it's all quite straightforward. There's no, no framework, sugar, or, or any, any syntax that you need to know on top of clean Vue.js um, that you have to understand. So basically, if you know how to build a page uh, in JavaScript, preferably in Vue.js, you know how to use Shopware frontends because that's just a minor thing to learn. Yeah. However, if your goal is to build an entire online shop with Shopware frontends, you should have experience with um, also the the deeper um, the deeper technicalities of Nuxt because you have to build the routing, you have to build the data fetching, mm -hmm. you have to make sure uh, you don't introduce memory leaks into your application, so it 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 gets more complex the more your com the, the more complex your um, your project gets, of course. Okay, um, so but the good thing for agencies, I think, is that the pool of uh, good JavaScript developers is a bit higher, way bigger than the pool yeah, of bigger. good Shopware developers. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So you do not need specific Shopware knowledge for this. Exactly. Great. So. Um, what are the plans with Shopware Frontend? So uh, I already teased that question. What does the success and our support for it, for the project, uh, de depend on? So what Shopware Frontend is to us as Shopware is the um, API interface of the composables. So this is what we care about. This is what we're going to keep stable. Th this is where we have compatibility criteria on and this is what we invest most of the time uh, documenting and making sure it's properly designed and properly maintained. Um, so the adoption of the composables is going to be what drives Shopware frontends and the way we will um, progress with it in the future. Mm -hmm. if, we f if we see that a certain composable is not used at all or always misunderstood it's the one that's most likely to change. And that relies on feedback, of course. That, are, that relies on feedback and yeah, that, okay. that, that relies on people. So, so the, the success and our taking care of the project basically is, uh, depends on how well this is received by the community. Okay, so um, yeah, start with forking, <laughs> and then give us feedback <laughs> and we will uh, take care of the project. All right. So um, we will maintain the API uh, client, we will maintain the composables, um, and this is where our focus is on. Uh, but of course, the community is invited to create other projects based on that or um, in other languages or frameworks, just recreate the whole thing. And if I might add, um, the community, especially now, since we're in a, in a phase where we are able to break stuff, um, the community is invited to have a look at the Composables API um, and really give feedback on whether something feels intuitive or maybe not really. And um, we can still shift things around, even though we think we, we have a pretty good state. But um, now we're in the position where we can break things. Um, maybe in, in two or three months from now, it's not going to be that easy anymore. Yeah. And for reference, we are talking November 2022. Okay, so uh, while, while we're recording this, <laughs> so this sure. would be the beginning of 2023, uh, where this will be frozen. Uh, this is also a nice movie. Anyway, so uh, where, where do we start? Where is the documentation? Um, where to get help? Where to find a community? Um. I would say the best way to start is on GitHub. Um, mm -hmm. Go to github.com slash shopware slash frontend. Um, we have a pretty in-depth readme um, and the documentation is also linked in there. Mm, on the right hand side. Exactly, on the right top. Um, you can go to the doc documentation. 
it's designed in such a way that you can just let the documentation guide you. Mm -hmm. um, it also deals a lot with the limitations of Shopify frontends because what we want to make sure is that people understand the project and we want to manage expectations in such a way that people are not going to be underwhelmed or disappointed with shop, what, what Shopify Frontends does or is because we think it's great when you understand what it can do. Um, so this, this is about the whole, it's not a complete storefront, it is a toolkit for building your storefront. Exactly. All right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there on, you can start setting up uh, one of the templates that mm -hmm. I talked about, the demo store template or the blank template. Um, you can do that within your browser. So uh, you, you've talked about StackBlitz before. It's basically an in-browser IDE. Um, it's pre-connected with a Shopware instance. It's literally a click and 20 seconds later after everything is built, you're able to edit code and see what changes. You can fork it right away, create a custom GitHub repository, whatever. And uh, yeah, we have guides ready that explain how to build different parts of your, of your front end. Um, or you can just head to the Composables uh, reference documentation and start using them on your own and just yeah. explore what's possible. All right, do we have a uh, Stack Overflow tag that you are watching? Uh, as of now, we're just watching the normal Shopware tag. Um, okay. Depending on the traffic, we might uh, decide to introduce a new one. Otherwise, for now, uh, we have the Shopware PWA channel in, uh, in the community Slack, which you can use. Um, we're also watching the normal Shopware channel, uh, I think the Shopware 6 channel, mm -hmm. um, for questions. Um, yeah, those but are in, the In the general, uh, if chat. you can use Stack Overflow because it's public in the Slack, it will get lost very, very quickly. True. Okay, so as uh, the last question that I noted down, um, why should anyone start a project while Project Shopper Frontends is still in beta? Um, it is basically the, the argument I've, I've brought up before. Um, just that Shopper Frontends is beta doesn't mean it's unstable or full of bugs. Um, it just means that we're still in a phase where we figure out how we want the API to look. Mm -hmm. So it is basically, if you start now, you can make sure that it fits your needs because you're one of the people that provide feedback. And you also have the knowledge already in your head when this thing is considered stable by us, although you can also use it now. So it's about gaining knowledge first, or as one of the, getting knowledge as one of the first people in the community and help shaping the whole thing to make sure that you can use it. Exactly, yeah. Great. Dominic, um, anything to add? Um, thanks for, uh, for having me. Uh, it was great talking to you again. Uh, thanks for everybody who's watching uh, and listening. Um, we're super, uh, super happy to hear any feedback. Constructive, positive, keep it coming. Um, one thing I missed, there's a GitHub uh, discussions tab on our repository. Um, it is structured by Q&A, by feedback, um, and, and also by general announcements from us. Um, that will be a platform for us for a more structured exchange. Um, we invite everyone to come in there and say hello. And okay. uh, if you have any questions or feedback, please put it in there. Great. Dominic, thank you for being here. And thanks everyone for watching. See you around. Bye-bye.